Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and I'm joined by Patrick Stone. Hey GN. And we have not shot three of these consecutively. They were in fact filmed on separate days. So today we're talking about PC troubleshooting and specifically some of the most common practices to troubleshoot basic issues like no video output mm -hmm. or fans spinning up and then spinning down again. Oh boy. Things like that. Things that we face all the time. Yep. So you were just facing this recently with a system build. What was the what Yeah, was the deal so there? as a matter of fact, it was just today helping a friend working on his first PC and he was pretty excited when he got his new parts in <laughs> and then in the end it turned out that he had a bad graphics card. It took us a few steps to get there though and using the common troubleshooting tips, that's how we got to the end. So like what's maybe one of the most common things that you would say, hey, check this. Well, cables, power cables, mm -hmm. the amount of times that I have personally overlooked the CPU power header is nothing short of embarrassing. <laughs> and that is, a, I think, a common issue, or at least that's what I tell myself. CPU power header needs to be checked, 24-pin header needs to be checked, mm -hmm. and then the seating of the components, RAM, is yep. it seated properly, make sure the tabs are actually clicked in. Yeah. They should snap when you push it down. The video card often needs to be reseated, mm -hmm. and then there's the CMOS battery. Yeah, to, j the CMOS battery, just to kind of clear settings out. Like, sometimes, for whatever reason, some of the settings get hosed and just pull the power from the computer, so you got no power going to the computer, pop the CMOS battery out, and then the CMOS settings cannot remain if you make sure the board has no power. Right. Yeah. And then some modern boards do have a clear CMOS button as well. Nice. So that is another way to do that. So those are the probably the basic intro things I would do mm -hmm. before looking at things like if it's a modular PSU, make sure your connection is one in the right spot. It yeah. shouldn't, shouldn't be possible to plug it in elsewhere, but usually keyed. You can you can force it though. Mm -hmm. And then also Seen make sure it. it's it's actually seated. Yeah, yeah, it's like all the way clicked in. I've I've actually seen that on the ATX twenty four pin main right. power where. It's kind of like crooked in the connector, so there's kind of a gap on one right. side, and that connection isn't solid. But there is there is an easier first step before all of that to do, though. Yeah, uh, just just some something that'll give you some heads up as what's going on. Yeah, so post beeps, speakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, a lot of times uh, motherboards, uh, as far as I know, every motherboard that I've seen has got this four-pin connector on the front panel headers, the front panel headers. The places where the, the reset button is, the place where the power LED is, hard drive LED, and the power button. Right. There's there's a speaker connected there too, and it's it's four pins wide, but you really only make use of the outer two pins, mm. and you plug in just this little what we call a PC speaker, and it's like it's gonna give you some beep codes if things are going well, and a lot more beep codes if things are <laughs> going poorly. Right. Single beep versus many beeps. Exactly. Exactly. And a quick clarification here because I've seen it on our forums before. Plugging in your actual speakers or headset to the 3.5 no. jack won't produce this. Mm -mm. The sound you need a specific PC speaker that plugs into the board. Yeah, and it, it on some motherboards they include it in the motherboard accessories package, and in other cases they include it with the actual case right. in a little plastic bag with other accessories. And then there's the seven segment display as well, which is a hexadecimal output. More powerful, absolutely. Uh, this is like the digital numbers you've seen before. Uh, we call it seven segment because it's got uh, yeah two two on the sides and then one two three, and that way you can create whatever numbers and letters you want. Right. Um, and the reason I said it's more powerful is because as opposed to just giving you beep codes, like as in like three consecutive beeps or three beeps, a pause, and a fourth beep, or something Long like that. Long beep, short beep, yeah. or whatever. Instead of having just th that kind of stuff, now you've got literally uh, a huge possible combination of letters and numbers that you can put together that m have specific meanings. But then how do we get those meanings? Manual, right? Absolutely, yeah. So, And the same with the beep codes, if you're relying on those rather than the display. Either way, you're cross-referencing a manual. And for the beep codes, there are BIOS or UEFI manufacturers or vendors we'll mm -hmm. call them like phoenix yep. ami mm -hmm. so you'll check those vendors for the beep codes if it's not available in your manual and then for the seven segment stuff you just go straight to the manual yeah and see what does it mean and a, a lot of times it's it's fine to have your paper manual out and you can reference paper manual but maybe you can't find exactly what you need right away uh pro tip just search yeah use pdf <laughs> use pdf and search it absolutely right other than that, I would say if, if things are still going poorly, 
you running through the list again and want to check the connections, just redo all of them despite thinking that you may have done it right. Yep. Just redo it all. Take, take our advice on that. Check the CMOS battery and reset it just to be sure. Do RAM seating. Reseating of the RAM, yeah. Absolutely. That, that's so common. Uh, you, as a matter of fact, Steve mentioned uh, earlier while we were talking that it, it's, it's a lot of times people think that they're not getting video output because of a bad graphics card. Right. And it turns out to be RAM. Right. So yeah. just, I mean, it takes what, five seconds? And just reseat it and give it a, give it a shot. Yeah, and that's that's important to know. Just because it's a video output issue, doesn't mean it's the video device. Mm -hmm. There could be an error earlier in the pipeline. Yep. That's preventing you from ever even getting there. And if none of this stuff works, you have to start going bare bones, which depending on who you ask might mean different things. But in in my opinion, there's only one proper meaning of bare bones. The essentials. And that's to go down to the CPU. Yep. One stick of RAM. And if you don't have an IGP or an APU, then your video card is, mm -hmm. is essential in that case. Otherwise, yeah. eliminate it and use the onboard video. Yeah. And of course, the motherboard is the platform and you got to have power going from the power supply. Right. So those five things, really. Right. And then just start switching out the RAM sticks to troubleshoot those. Mm -hmm. If you take the GPU out, use the IGP and see it works, then you found your problem, probably. Mm -hmm. And I think that about covers the very basics. That's so. it, yeah. So check the link in the description below for more information. We'll try and do a couple more of these if you have specific questions. So if you have a troubleshooting question or maybe something that you've solved and think yeah. would be interesting, share it. Share it and we'll, we'll do a video. As always, check the Patreon link in the post roll if you like this kind of content. And we'll see you all next time.